Good day everyone! Welcome to our new session about Earth Science. In the last meeting, we had tackled the rock cycle and igneous rocks. We learned to classify igneous rocks by their composition and texture. So today, we will discuss the other type of rock, the sedimentary rocks. Okay, so what can sedimentary rocks tell us? Sedimentary rocks tell us about polyclimate environment, source material, history of transport and deposition, climate or temperature, and fossils. Okay, so there are two um, primary steps in the transformation of existing rocks into sedimentary rocks. These are weathering and erosion. The remaining steps in the formation of sedimentary rocks are transportation, deposition, boreal, and latification. Transportation is the movement of sediments or dissolved ions from the site of erosion to a site of um, deposition. This can be by wind, flowing water, glacial ice, or mass movement down a slope. Deposition takes place where the condition change enough so that sediments being transported can no longer be transported. Boreal occurs when more sediments are piled onto existing sediments and layers formed earlier are covered and compacted. Litification is what happens at depths of hundreds to thousands of meters when those compacted um, sediments become cemented together to form solid sedimentary rock. To degree of sorting, um, we have here a well-sorted sand and poorly sorted sand. Okay, so a clast is a fragment of rock or mineral ranging in size from less than a micron to small to see to as big as an apartment block. Most sand size class are made of quartz because quartz is more resistant to weathering than any other common mineral. Many of the class that are smaller than sand size are made of clay minerals. So most class are larger than sand size greater than um, 2 millimeters are actual fragments of rock and commonly this might be fine grain rock like um, basalt or andesite or if they are bigger um, coarse grain rock like granite or nice okay sorting is a measure of how similar grains uh, sizes are within a sediment or rock and tells us about the relative strength of the current before it is being deposited. The larger and denser grains fall faster than the smaller grains. Thus, size determines its settling velocity. Okay, so um, clasped within streams are moved in several different ways. Okay, so large bed load clasps are pushed by traction or bounced along the bottom by saltation. While smaller clasps are suspended in the water and kept there by the turbulence of the flow. As the flow velocity changes, Different size class may be either incorporated into the flow 
are deposited on the bottom. At various places along a river, there are always some um, class being deposited, some staying where they are, and some being eroded and transported. This changes over time as the discharge of the river changes in response to changing weather conditions. So other sediments, transportation media, such as waves and ocean currents and wind oper uh, operate under similar principles. So uh, with flow velocity as the key underlying factor that controls, uh, that controls transportation and deposition. So this means that the bigger and larger the class or sediments, the higher the energy it is needed to transport it. Okay. So the difference in the size of the class can determine the time it has been transported. The more angular the class are the shorter the distance it traveled. And the longer the class traveled from one area to another, the more it will change shape into a rounder and smaller class. Okay? Next, we have um, the litification process. Litification is the term used to describe a number of different processes that take place within a deposit of sediment to turn it into solid rock. One of these processes is burial by other sediments, which leads to compaction of the material and removal of some of the intervening water and air. After this stage, the individual clasps are touching one another. Cementation is the process of um, crystallization of minerals within the pores between the small clasps and especially at the points of contact between clasps. Depending on the pressure, temperature, and chemical conditions, these crystals might include a range of minerals, the common ones being calcite, hematite, quartz, and clay minerals. Compaction, um, it is a volume loose, loss, um, mechanical squeezing accompanied by the watering. So, water, lo water lost by physical or um, physical means. Thus, um, changing its mineral composition by chemical procedure with heat and fluids. Cementation is the um, physical aspects. Okay, so if a sediment eventually becomes a rock, we can see it. It is a uh, uh, it is litified, so therefore, uh, litification turns sediments into solid rock, and it involves the compaction of sediments, and then the cementation of grains by minerals that precipitate from groundwater in the spaces between these grains. Okay, so we have here quartz sand grains and calcite cement. Sedimentary rocks are likely to form in areas such as um, deltas, uh, beaches, rivers, glaciers, sand dunes, shallow seas, and deep oceans. Okay, so in this picture, we can see uh, the sedimentary environment. So from the geographic location and plate tectonic setting, the transport agent 
and medium organic processes and organisms that modify um, sediments and climate also we have the sediments deposited okay so and also we have uh, the continental environments shoreline environments and marine environments Okay, so there are three basic categories of, sedim of sedimentary rocks. Okay, the clastic, the crystalline or chemical, and bioclastic or organic. Clastic, uh, the rock fragments are lithified or glued together to form a rock. So these rocks are made of different uh, these rocks are made of different pieces stuck together so conglomerate and brescia have the largest um, particles next are uh, the crystalline rocks that form from ions or smallest particles that were dissolved in in the sea water this rock usually form as the ocean water evaporates away and leaves the dissolved minerals um, behind okay so these are also monomineralic next we have the bioclastic organic so rocks form from biological products. So things that died and solidified together over time. So coal and limestones are great examples. So So plastic, glass and crystalline chemical ions in solution and bioclastic is bioorganic. Sedimentary rocks that are made up of glass are called clastic sedimentary rocks. So a comparable term is detrital sedimentary rocks. So whereas um, clastic sedimentary rocks are dominated by components that have been transported as solid glass. So in clay, salt, sand, and etc so um plastic sedimentary rocks made of broken pieces of rocks or sediments okay so for example we have here sandstone saltstone brescia and conglomerate next um chemical sedimentary rocks or chemical um minerals dissolve in lakes seas or underground water so chemical sedimentary rocks are dominated by components that have been transported as ions in solution there is some overlap between the two because almost all plastic sedimentary rocks contain cement form from dissolved ions um, and many chemical sedimentary rocks include some class since ions can stay in solution for tens of thousands of years and can travel for tens of thousands of kilometers, so it is virtually impossible to relate chemical sediments back to their source rocks. So the, mo uh, the most common chemical sedimentary rock by far is limestone. Others include um, chert. Banded iron formation and evaporites. Biological processes are important in the formation uh, of some um, chemical sedimentary rocks, especially limestone and chert. For example, limestone is made up of 
almost entirely of fragments of marine organism that manufacture calcite for their shells and other hard parts. And most chert includes at least some of the silica test of tiny marine organisms such as diatoms and radiolarians. So for example, I, we have here, um, sorry, the Bonnevif, uh, Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. So next, organic sedimentary rocks. So organic are remains of um, plants and animals that are deposited in thick layers. For example, we have here coal, uh, fossiliferous limestone, and coquina. So, we have here a der uh, derivation of sedimentary rocks, so from sediments to sedimentary rocks. So, for example, um, we have here a sediments of gravel. So, to sedimentary rocks, may mo siyang conglomerate, sand, may mo siyang sandstone, salt to salt stone, and clay to shell. Okay, so also we have here the summary of um, sedim sedimentary rocks. So, the trital or inorganic land derives sedimentary rocks. So, by plastic, um, rock formed from compacted organic matter. Okay. So, structures and formations seen in sedimentary rocks include the following. So, stratification, cross bedding, graded bedding, ripple, mark, uh, ripple marks, mud cracks, fossils and bioturbation. So in the next slide uh, we will discuss it one by one. First, certification. It is a series of visible layers within a rock, so most common uh, sedimentary structure. Okay. So next the cross uh, cross bedding Series of thin inclined layers within a horizontal bed of rock, uh, which is common in sandstone. Next, um, graded bedding. Um, progressive change in grain size from bottom to top of a bed. So, mani siya ang sequence. I mean... Uh, the graph of um, graded uh, graded bidding. Okay, so sequence above flood plain, mud and salt. One sequ um, one sequence shallow chan channel. Fine grain sand to this part, small scale cross bedding, and the deep channel kay coarse grain um, sediments, large scale cross bedding. So, ma'am, this is the picture, the photograph, and the interpretative, uh, the interpretive drawing. Next, we have the ripple marks. So, small range, uh, ridges form in surface of sediment layer by moving wind or water. Next, mud cracks. Um, when clay reach um, sediments dry, they shrink and crack into polygonal patterns bounded by fractures. Okay, next we have fossils. 
uh, traces of plants or animals preserved in a sedimentary rock. As what can you see in the picture? Next, uh, bioterbation. Biogenic sedimentary structures include um, tracks, bureaus, trails, cold trays, um, fossils. So, extensive burrowing by organisms is called bioterbation. So, it may alter sediments so thoroughly that other structures are disrupted, I mean, disrupt, disrupted or destroyed. Okay, so here are some examples of um, structures of sedimentary rock. And um, formation that's seen in sedimentary rocks. Again, so this is, uh, here are some pic uh, pictures of the structures and formations that's seen in sedimentary rocks. Okay, this one. Okay, so uh, that sums up everything. So I hope class you have learned something new from the discussion today. And yeah, see you in the next video and God bless everyone. Have a great day.